So now to begin our discussion on excretion, we'll entitle this first flowchart uh, as just a basic introduction. And what we want to understand is that excretion is not just going to be within humans, but within a broad range of organisms. Uh, and it's going to be a con it's going to be done by and completed by uh, what's known as an excretory system. So there's going to be uh, you know, a set of organs, a set of tissues, uh, highly differentiated and highly devoted to that process of excretion. And excretory systems will all have three major functions as a common denominator. It doesn't matter what the organism is. So these three functions are as follows. Uh, first and foremost, a really important function of any excretory process is this idea of osmoregulation. And this actually goes hand in hand to something that we've already spoken about uh, within the homeostasis lecture. But nonetheless, we can reiterate that osmoregulation is, of course, a regulatory mechanism. So you have to ask yourself, it's the regulation of what? So let's answer that. Osmoregulation will be the regulation of two separate but very much intertwined things. It will be the regulation of the water content that's within the body, within the organism, so H2O content, and whatever is dissolved within that H2O content. And we can basically say, in other words, the concentration, that's what we mean by you know dissolved substances within water, but also the distribution of anything that might be dissolved within that water content within the organism in question. So we're talking about the concentration and distribution uh, of ions, let's say, because ions are, at least in biology, going to be very much soluble within water. How do we figure out how much ions? Do we want a high concentration, a low concentration? How much water? Do we want to keep a lot of water? Do we want to excrete a lot of water? All of that is governed, all of that is regulated by this process of osmoregulation occurring within an excretory system. And there are two broad ways we can a subclassify osmoregulatory mechanisms uh, and those would be uh, as follows. We could have organisms that label themselves or are considered osmoconformers and we've seen this idea before of conforming uh, versus osmoregulators and we'll do that over here right after. So osmoregulators. So these are two ends of the spectrum of course okay but we can easily classify an organism as one or the other. Now, those who are conformers, specifically osmoconformers, will give you uh, a basic definition here. These are going to be organisms in which the body fluids, and again, why are we talking about fluids? Because again, osmoregulation is all about this water content. Uh, the body fluids are going to be in what is known as osmotic equilibrium. Okay, Osmotic equilibrium. So whatever body fluids are within this organism, they're going to be in osmotic equilibrium with the surrounding environment. And specifically, that surrounding environment, almost guaranteed, uh, is going to actually be, and we can put this in parentheses just to emphasize this fact, it's going to be seawater. And the reason why is because this is going to be a mechanism of osmoregulation seen exclusively within all marine animals. And if you don't know already, marine animals are just those that live in salt water, that live in seawater. We're not talking about freshwater organisms. We're not talking about terrestrial organisms like you and I. We're talking about seawater, marine dwelling organisms. They're all going to be osmoconformers. They're all going to have the equal osmolarity, equal osmotic uh, conformation with the surrounding environment. Uh, this is otherwise known as, they will maintain what's known as an isoosmotic let me just rewrite that, an isoosmotic uh, environment that's going to be uh, between the body versus the external environment. So they will have sort of the same concentration distribution, the same water content as their outside environment. They're conforming, in other words, to their outside marine uh, seawater environment. What about osmoregulators? Osmoregulators will regulate their osmolarity. That's exactly where the name comes from. And how do we do this? Uh, this is going to be the idea that these organisms control, they regulate internal osmolarity. So we're basically not going to conform anymore, but instead control, that's the key word here, or regulate internal osmolarity. And another big word here is independently, independently of the external environment. So this is going to be seen uh, in organisms that live in what are considered variable environments. Variable environments would be anything like 
freshwater organisms because the amount of solute within the fresh water uh, may differ from day to day depending on how much rain that uh, an environment uh, is going to you know exhibit or receive and also within terrestrial organisms like you and I again our terrestrial lifestyle is not going to be the same day after day there are many climates that we're going to have to go through therefore different amounts of rain different amounts of solids all that stuff there's a variability within osmoregulators environments and therefore in order to combat that variability uh, we have to control our internal osmolarity independent of whatever's going on on the outside so that's our basic premise of osmoregulation but that's the one big idea associated with excretory system, a big picture idea. In addition to that, more so with the physiology, getting into a little bit more of the specifics, excretory systems will also have a key function of doing this job of osmoregulation. And I think steps two and three, functions two and three, will actually be the process of doing osmoregulation rather than, rather than just classifying what it is. So what does it mean to do osmoregulation? Well, one of those things is to collect fluid Okay, collect fluid, this is what we're talking about here, from the internal environment, from what's considered either the blood, because the blood is mainly composed of fluid, uh, or the interstitial fluid, ISF in other words. And once you collect that fluid, you have to regulate it. You have to figure out how much you want to keep, how much you want to excrete. That's the idea, right? Collecting and excreting. And that's what number three is all about. Step three is just that actual process of excretion, not step three, but function three, I should say. Excretion is, again, uh, the main purpose of this entire system, but I want to make something very, very clear. Excretion is not equal to, it is not the same thing as a term that we've seen uh, before or will be seeing, that's elimination. It is not equal to elimination. Elimination is something that you're going to be seeing in the digestive system, and it's the end all, uh, you know, final step within the digestive system. That's a very different process than excretion because excretion is going to emphasize this idea of collecting fluid and keeping fluid, whereas elimination is going to be a different idea once you get to it. So how do we do excretion? Excretion is going to be done via the removal of, that's what we're trying to excrete, right? We're trying to excrete metabolic waste. So this is where we're getting more specific metabolic wastes uh, from the body. So what you have to remember is that your body is going to be doing, and any organism's body is going to be doing tons and tons of metabolism, breaking things down, building things up, anabolic, catabolic reactions, left and right. You have to also remember that when you're doing all this stuff, it's not just going to be pure and complete reactions that have nothing left over. There are going to be waste products throughout all of this metabolism. And what you have to do at some point or another is get rid of whatever is waste, whatever may become toxic or build up. So we can basically state that metabolic waste, in other words, MW for metabolic waste, uh, are going to be anything that at some point, at some point, uh, was in the cells, you know, it was it was formerly one product and turned into another because of some sort of cellular reaction. It was at some point uh, was in the cells or part of metabolism. But no, no longer is it needed, and therefore we have to get rid of it. We have to excrete it. And the best way to do that is to utilize this excretory system. In addition, the reason why we want to do this is because we actually must. We must remove, because this is part of osmoregulation, right? Concentration and distribution of ions. In other words, concentration and distribution of metabolic waste is also important. Must remove these uh, metabolic wastes to actually maintain homeostasis because we want to maintain an internal environment that is highly regulated. And part of that regulation is going to be ensuring the removal of these metabolic wastes. Uh, this is very much broadly speaking. So just to put it into a brief context, let me give you two key examples of metabolic waste. One you're quite familiar with, carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2, if you remember way back when from cell respiration, this is going to be an output of cell respiration. This is going to be something that we breathe out. And how do we remove this? It's actually removed, not by the excretory system, but it's actually removed via the respiratory system, RS for short. We breathe this out. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Do we use carbon dioxide for anything? No, it's actually going to be toxic at high levels within us. That's why we get rid of it. We, we exhale it out and inhale oxygen. That's a metabolic waste. 
based off of a cell respiration metabolism process. What about in this excretory system world? A classic example here is going to be nitrogenous waste. That's what we're going to focus on here. Nitrogenous waste, that's the big idea here, so we'll start it. This is what excretory system is all about. Getting rid of nitrogenous waste, and these are removed via the excretory system. So we'll write that down, and that's what we're going to be looking at as we move forward. Removed via ES for short. So those are the three broad functions of the excretory system. We'll get into these details uh, as we move forward. What we want to focus on now is this idea of removing nitrogenous waste and how we do it within organisms' excretory systems.